Uh, what I use these for is hunting. And I go out, I make no apologies for that, I go out with these guys hunting rabbits. And some people have a very strange idea about what the role of the ferret is. And I was at a show uh, the other week down in Kent, uh, and a, a guy came up to see me, and he said, I'll be looking everywhere for you, I want to see something. He's got his ferret box open, it's up, and inside this tiny little Jill, absolutely uh, black as coal. Come here, you little devil, thank you. Black as coal, soft as grease. And I picked it up and I said, wow, absolutely beautiful. And he said, yeah, but not only is she beautiful, she's also very, very clever. And I said, tell me about it. He said, well, she is very highly trained. I have trained her, and he told me that he had trained the best ferries in the world. And I said, so tell me, I'm going to let her out today in a second, so tell me what makes it so good. And he said, it's brilliant. He says, all I do, I put her by the hole, she runs underground, she kills the rabbit, drops it at my feet and goes and gets another one until they're all, all finished. And I said, that is brilliant, but it's not the best ferries in the world, because this little one is. This one is called Dotty. She is Dotty, but she also got Dot on her head. And uh, little Dotty, I say, is much better ferret than that because she is very well trained. What she does, she goes underground, she kills the rabbit, she drags it out, she guts it, skins it, cooks it in a rabbit pie, <laughs> and puts on a French maid's outfit and serves it up full silver service. And if you believe one, believe the other, they're both total twaddle. Right? The one role of the ferret is to go underground and make the rabbit come running out. Mrs. Beaton said, if you want to make a rabbit pie, first get your rabbit. Well, that's what these guys help us do. I'm very lucky. I don't work, as my wife will tell you. All I do is I play around with ferrets and hawks and things like that. And uh, you know, don't knock it if you've uh, not tried it. But basically, during the winter, I said, these guys, they help me make a living by uh, getting rid of rabbits for people. And when I tell my wife I'm going out to work, then she knows who's going to be doing the work. It's not me. I do a little bit. These guys do most of it, which is why I think uh, they should be well looked after. And basically what happens is they chase round and ground, they get the rabbit to come out, and when it comes out, I've got to do something to catch that rabbit. And there are a whole range of things that we can do. We can stand with guns and we can shoot the rabbits as they bolt. We can use uh, hawks or dogs to chase them. A whole range of things. But when I'm out there doing that job, it is a job of work. And the people who are paying me don't want me to have a good time, they want me to get rid of all of the rabbits. Put them in the shade, we've still got the adult Jill under there. The terms you notice are old fashioned, the females are called Jills. The males, I do not have a male with me this weekend, for the simple reason that it's that time of year, and it's difficult to pry them apart. You know where I'm coming from there. So we've only got the females, but the males are called Hobbs, the youngsters are called Kits, uh, and we have some special males which I'll talk about in a couple of minutes time. But what we need to do, let me take you out for days ferreting before we start, shall I? Imagine you've come up to see us, we're based up in the uh, Derbyshire Peak District, and lots of people come up in the winter to go out with us for days ferreting. To learn how to do it, but also literally to do it themselves and get mud on the boots. So the first thing we do is pick the ferrets for the day. And people always ask, how do you pick them? Do you use male, females, what colour, how many? Well, let's start with the easy one, male or female. Well, this is a female, as I've already explained, a Jill. And males and females are different. You give a female a job to do, and she gets on and she does it. Yeah. If you give a male a job to do, well, you know, we try and put it off until tomorrow or the day after, and we drag our feet and there's not much enthusiasm. And ferrets are exactly the same. And if I put a female ferret in, what she tends to do she obviously can't smell a darn thing in there because no rabbits are there, but they go through really quickly. Rabbits pop out all over, but sometimes they're a bit too quick, and as they're hurtling down in the ground, I'm sure some of the rabbits step to one side, and she goes past because she's running so quickly, she doesn't notice it. Whereas if you put a male in after her, he plods along, obviously falls a long way behind her, but he's plodding along, and if you like, he sweeps up after her. So we will always use males and females together. This is during the winter, when uh, there's no attraction between them. And what we normally do, I use what I call a team of ferrets. My team consists of two Jills and one Hob. And I will decide how many teams we want. I put them in a box like this. Let me just stick her in there for 30 seconds, like that. And I always carry my ferrets in a box like this. Some people use these things. This is a ferret carry bag. You, you little devil. God. I don't need any help making you look silly. Thank you. This is what some people call a ferret carry bag. And I'm told by people who use these that these are much better. 
And the question I ask is, for who? Certainly not for the ferret. You imagine you've got a ferret in here. This is supposed to be big enough for three ferrets. It has to be tiny to get in there. But anyway, let's say you've got a couple of ferrets in there. You're going out ferreting. Traditionally, you go after rabbits when there is an R in the month. In other words, during the autumn, winter, spring. Yeah? Bring yourself bring a, bag a net. Up so I can get it. A net like this. Now, you notice yeah. the first thing is that that net is all nice and neatly rolled up and it's secured by a rubber band. Method in my madness. My wife can never understand why my office is always a mess. Anything in this bag and the proper bag that I use when I go out uh, ferreting, always nice and neat and tidy. That's because I've got my priorities right. And I need to, when I put my hand in my bag, I need to pull out one net. Not a big bundle of nets. It takes me half an hour to do. I just need the one. And by securing it with a rubber band, that keeps it nice and secure. But also, it helps me not to lose nets. I'm a big believer that you should never leave nets behind you. I think it is totally unprofessional. But also, maybe it's my upbringing. My parents are Scottish. I was born and raised in Yorkshire. And the definition of a Yorkshireman is a Scot with all the generosity beaten out of him. And that fits me. And if I leave one of those behind, I'm leaving money behind. So why would I do it? I wouldn't. So when I take the band off, I put it on my wrist. And then at the end of the day, I pick them up, and if I've still got a band on my wrist, I've still got a net down. A really easy way of making sure you don't leave any behind. I also like using these nets now. I mean, the traditional one, let me just uh, show you a traditional one. Here you go. This literally is one I made earlier, a long, long time ago. Made out of hemp, with a traditional piece of hazel attached to it. And everyone tells me hemp is the best material. Hmm. Maybe it was 30 years ago. We've moved. That is very good, providing you look after it. If you don't look after that, put it away damp, it will mildew, it will rot. And once it's rotted, a rabbit will hit it and run straight through it. Okay, just think about it for 30 seconds. Something is chasing you. It's going to kill you. You turn a corner and there's a net of a colour you don't like and you say, oh no, I don't like that colour, please kill me. It ain't gonna happen. Secondly, you're running out of the dark into the light. Anything that is between you and the light is going to be silhouetted. Grey. And last but by no means least, rabbits are colourblind. So the colour of this matters not one jot to the rabbit, it matters to you. And if you think it works, go with it. If you don't think it works, then don't go with it. I'm a big believer in the placebo. But this, made out of nylon, you can put it away, soppy wet, kicked it, but if you want to, it's not going to rot. Can outlive any of us here, believe you me. So what we do with this, oh let me just show you the other end as well. Just a standard peg, but I've also put a bit of uh, fluorescent paint on the end. And after just saying that you can't miss this, why have I painted that? That's because sometimes a rabbit runs out of one hole and it doesn't get netted for whatever reason, turns around and runs into another hole and it gets back netted. So in other words, it gets netted when it's going back in. And what it will do, it will drag all this inside and the only thing you've got outside is this. Well, again, nice bit of fluorescent paint there. That should shine out just about wherever you are, so you don't miss it. So, we find a warrant, we find the holes. This hole here, let me stick this away if I lose that. This hole here, the rabbit is going to come running out in that direction. So, everyone has different ways of doing this. But the way I do it is I always, first of all, secure the peg before I put the net over. And there's a right and a wrong way to do it, as with everything. If I put this peg in, facing the direction in which the rabbit is running from, like that, when it hits it, it's going to pop out. Waste of time, I've lost my rabbit. It's like putting up a tent. Put it in, in the opposite direction to the pull, and then it ain't going to pull out anywhere near as easily. So I set it off to one side, I push it in the ground, and this ground really is rock hard today. Never ever hammer these in. If you do, you're frightening the rabbits. While we're doing this, we should be keeping as quiet as possible. I don't allow people to smoke around warrens. So whether you smoke or not is up to you. But the rabbits don't like the smell of smoke and will not come out. So what we do then, once we've secured it, we've put the net over the hole. And what I want to try to get is the rabbit to hit slap bang in the centre.